welcome to round four of the Late Break Your Online Racing League. We're here at Albert Park in Melbourne, Australia. Albert Park has the distinction of being the only venue to host the Australian Grand Prix in both World Championship and non-World Championship formats, with an earlier configuration of the current circuit used for the race on two occasions during the 1950s. The Formula 1 season usually begins with a race here down under and often causes controversy and a tone for the rest of the year, often filled with unreliability and unexpected finishes. The tight, twisting circuit and the driver's eagerness to impress from the off frequently results in spectacular crashes and cars bolting over one another. A classic case of this is Alonso colliding with Gutierrez, hitting the wall and then catching the gravel trap, sending his car into a barrel roll through the air. If you make a mistake, then bring your rake, is an expression that applies wholeheartedly when racing around the streets of Melbourne. Unlike some more modern tracks, gravel traps are around the edge of the track and can be race-ending if the driver isn't too careful. Due to its tight, winding track, there is usually a 50% chance of a safety car making an appearance here, and this can be race deciding. The best places to pull off an overtake are down to the heavy braking of Turn 3, after the fast chicane into Turn 14, and, if you're brave, the rapid right turn at the end of Turn 1 at the start finish straight. We've already seen drivers receive many corner cutting penalties this season and Melbourne is no different with corners 11 and 12 incredibly easy to shortcut. The 5.3 kilometre track has a lap record of 1 minute 24 seconds set by Michael Schumacher way back in 2004. 16 corners make up the track, 10 to the right, 6 to the left. Jack Hickey was our winger here last year and he's already been on pole position. Ben, who do you think will weather the dangers of Australia and emerge on top? Well, with 17 drivers on the grid, another jam-packed one today. There are a number of drivers that could take victory. Jay Ghost has already picked up a win. Caesar t Payne already picked up a win. Carnes has already picked up a win. Jack Hickey won here last year. Balal Khan had pole here last year. So you've got so many contenders and it's just going to be about who can keep their nose clean get out well in qualifying, head up the field, and then maybe go about their way and, and dominate proceedings. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those tracks that really, if you can scamper off, other drivers tend to hold each other off through battling. So we'll have to see that if qualifying is all important here, if a major incident changes everything that happens. As uh, a few cars have stuck out there, so there's a Mercedes, Shiki's out there, Mega's out there, and I'm looking at some white tents. Well, Carnes' main problem so far has been his qualifying. He hasn't been able to qualify high enough up the grid in order to get himself in a position to win the races. He qualified well in, uh, in Brazil, and as a result of that, he went on to win the race. But the last two, he's got just 12 points from, mainly due to where he started. He started in the thick of things, and as a result, he's been caught up in incidents as Neles has retired from the session, so he won't be setting a lap this time out. Hans is time looking quite speedy. It's been very clean so far. Oh, he's got traffic up ahead though. There's Jack Higgins got out of the way brilliantly, but he's got Mayra in front, who I think is on a lap. So this could be a little bit difficult for Carlos to navigate. I think Mayra has backed out of his lap because he was well up the ro uh, up the road. So, uh, oh, that's not. He's got. Oh, he's really got in the way there. Carlos has had to slow up. Yeah, Mayra now will get out of the way. But yes, as you say, the question is whether his lap has been destroyed enough for it not to be competitive. Jay Ghost has got pole in his last two races. Is he going to get a third one? We'll find out in 14 minutes, 17 seconds. Gilzo's out. What's going on here? Well, Gilzo's really struggled in qualifying this season. Even when he's finished on the podium in the last race, he wasn't able to set a good lap time. He hasn't qualified in the top 10 all year. Yet he sits fifth in the championship, so it's as if he's a, a better racer than he is a qualifier. And obviously here again, he's not setting a lap time. That's a great lap from Purple Petrol there. Just going to put that one out there. Not too, not too shabby from Perps. Definitely not. He's only about four tenths off the pace of Bilal Khan. As Johannes is the latest guy to set a lap time. He's another one who struggled in qualifying and as a result hasn't been able to get anywhere in the races. He's qualifying P2 here at the moment though. He goes marginally quicker than Khan's. Jay Ghost has made a massive mistake there. He's locked up going to turn three. Nearly run onto the gravel trap. I hope he's got a rake in that cockpit of his because he has cost him that lap. So he's going to have to head back to the pits, put a new set of tyres on and hope that he can get out there into some fresh air. Enough with the rake references, man. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> going on board the 121.8 train, Homeback has gone into P2. Uh, the gap between P2 and P4 is so marginal. Yes, we have one new driver this week. He's going to go and race for Haas alongside Carnes. His name is Ricky. He's had a few impressive time trial uh, 
laps that I've seen. So maybe he'll be competitive and compete for some podiums, maybe some wins. It all remains to be seen. This qualifying session might tell us a little bit oh! more. But he's lost the car on the exit of the chicane and very nearly careers into the barriers. Uh, and that was a fastest lap by Jay Ghost. So 121.2. So that's about three tenths quicker. It's exactly three tenths quicker than what Hippuli boy. And once again, the McLarens are one and two, Sam. The McLarens are almost inverting what the McLarens can do in real life. It is so great to see those papaya cars at the front. And I think Hapuli Boy and Jay Ghosts are trading who's better at what tracks. Those two are very equally matched. And I think that could be a season long battle between those two teammates. Uh, Mr. Psycho saying has gone quick as soft. Super soft. What a lap that is. On the super soft tyre, Mr. Psycho saying has gone quicker than everyone else. There have been a lot of good laps set by the guys out there. And then someone on a harder compound has come along and thrown it completely into the open. What a lap! If you want any indication of how competitive this league is, the guy who is 11th place in the standings has just gone fastest in qualifying on a tyre which is harder than everyone else around him. Yeah, the uh, the variation in performance each race is so confusing. We don't really have a dominant performer right now. As Ricky comes across the line for pole, 120.9, goes ahead of Mr. Psycho saying, now what I was going to say was that uh, Ricky Martin, he bangs, he bangs. And also, we have this overcast weather almost every race at the moment. It seems to make a performance at some point, performance, appearance is what I was trying to say there, uh, at some point across the weekend. Yeah, well, we had rain last time out in Hungary to start the race. It was only about oh, six or seven laps. Oh, there's a red bull on the track. That is. Maynard. Uh, not going about his qualifying lap the way he would have wanted. Meanwhile, Homeback has retired in P5, so he'll be hoping the guys behind him, not many of them improve. Shiki's in the wall, he's out! Oh, Shiki's out. So that's four guys who have retired from qualifying now, and we've still got half of the session to go. It's Curly Apex going across the grass and who was that um, was Caesar t who set his first lap as he go goes into P2. it was P4 which was demoted to P5 on the super soft tyres notably and then yes, as you say Carnes goes P2 so a couple of minutes ago we had a McLaren 1-2 now it's a Haas 1-2 now, we're watch I'm watching Johannes here on board with him he's only uh, he's 9 tenths off pole he's coming oh no he's made a huge mistake <laughs> That's a spin for Johannes. The Renault goes right around. We're not sure what the lap time was set to be, but even if he was on an out lap, that isn't good preparation for the next one as he's now going into the pits. I think he was on a lap. He was about to complete a lap, I think. But he won't. <laughs> but he won't is correct. And he's P9. And once again, Johannes is faced with a bad starting position if he can't improve on that 121.8. Yeah, uh, meanwhile, Bilal Khan has gone into P3 on the Ultra Soft Tyres. Uh, like you say, he did have pole position this time last year at this race. So we know he's got pace around Melbourne. Is he going to be able to use that to his advantage and get ahead of the two Haas guys ahead of him? DJ Marshall gets stuck a lap now. He's down in 10th place, although you had it in front of him. something good is just having spins. Hoback is out. Do we really think he could get another three or four tenths and move up into the top six or seven? Or is he at his limit here, hoping to maintain a good speed and gain further places in the race? Well, if you want to use P6 as a, as a barometer, he's six tenths off that mark. So he will have to improve by a fair bit if he wants to get into that sort of top five, top six mix. And he isn't quicker through the first sector. He's only marginally slower, so he could still find time. No, he's backed off. So the only guy who hasn't set a lap time so far who hasn't retired is Jack Kiki, and we're on board with him now. We did see, actually, on the graphic, he was toying with the idea of going out on the super soft tyre, but it seems as if he's going to stick with the ultra soft tyre and make that one work. You can still do a one-stop on the ultra soft tyres, but it's going to be more difficult. You're going to have to take them about nine laps into the race, by which point they might be a little bit difficult to handle. Yeah, we've got the top four all on outlaps at the moment. The McLaren guys are still both in the pits, so they're going to leave it a little longer. But DJ Marshall is looking to improve on a 121.9. Can he do it? He can. He does improve. He goes ahead of home back into P8. Something very interesting to go is Mr. Cycle saying is out of a lap and he is on the ultra soft tyres. It looks like he's bidding off the strategy for a one stop. Well, theoretically, if he's three tenths off of pole on a harder compound tyre, he's going to be pretty competitive on these ultra softs. That is theoretically, of course. He might have he might abandon his lap. We'll have to wait and see. He would still start on super softs, wouldn't he? Jack Tiggy's back in the session. Um, yeah, he would still start on super softs currently in fourth. Oh, he's lost it. This is like the ground. Oh, no. 
Well, that running wide moment there has kind of made his decision for him. Um, he will have time to set another lap time, so and, we'll see if Carl he does. Has, has cut across the corner massively and is in the gravel as well. Uh, something really going on with these drivers. A lot of drivers struggling to find the grip going around these corners. Maybe using very aggressive setups. I think it's a case of everyone trying too hard on their final runs. We saw the same thing in Hungary last week where no one seemed to improve with about two minutes to go. Maybe they're pushing themselves too hard. It makes sense considering they've got their bank collapse in. You've got time for three runs. Is this third run all or nothing essentially? Bilal Khan seemed to go a little wide there. We don't know if that's affected his time at all. It still looks fairly competitive. He needs to improve by about three tenths. And he does. He improves by much more than three tenths. He goes in with a 120.5. A four tenths advantage. Can Ricky do anything about it? He's on a good lap. No! But it's not enough. A 120.6 for the hash driver. Two hundredths of a se second separate the two drivers. It could be incredibly close between our top four or five this race. On board with Psycho saying he is three tenths up. So there is a real chance that he will be able to get oh, in the no, mix. Oh no, he's going again at the same corner. Unbelievable. I think Jay Ghost must be on a lap as it is. And he is one tenth up through the first sector. So there's still time for him to find. If he can improve by just over a tenth, he will get P3. I think he's the... Yeah, they got ball with him since the start. You're right, he is on a lap and he's been driving incredibly clean. This lap is incredibly strong. If you can keep it together, I think he will improve because he's so close to Mr. Psycho like saying. Yeah, both McLaren seemingly on a lap right now. Jay Ghost goes through the chicane, no problems at all, as he'll go on the DRS once more as he heads down into the next corner. Just got to deal with this technical third section. Curly Apex in the back of the screen there has retired from the session. He'll start P13. But it's all about Jay Ghost now. Can he get his third pole position in a row and prevent Bilal Khan from claiming his second Australian Grand Prix pole position in a row? It's all about now the run to the line. Is he going to be able to compete with this 120.5? No, a 121. He goes ahead of Mr. Psycho Sane and Khan's, but it's not enough. Hapuli Boy is improving as well. Yeah, Mr. Psycho Sane has managed to get a lap out, I think. He's, he's going through the second sector now. Yeah, Mr. Psycho Sane is up on his time. Hapuli Boy, I think, yeah, he is done. So Hapuli Boy will start P6 at the moment. Oh, that was a massive corner cut from Mr. Psycho Sane, and that's game over. That is game over. And it's just Johannes who might be on a lap now. He is the last. Yeah, Johannes is improving. It's a strong lap from Johannes. He flies through the middle sector. It's clean. No mistakes there. Through the new DRS and into the final sector, which we know he has made mistakes on both his runs. If he can improve, he could jump a good five, six positions. Yeah, three temps improvement would at least be good enough to get up to P8. Uh, he'll need to improve by quite a bit more if he wants to get in amongst that group of P5, P6, P7. Johannes goes very wide and he nearly makes contact with the wall and surely that's going to derail his lap time enough. Did it? Did he get P4, it? P4, P4, P4 I think. Wow, Johannes brought it out in the final sector. That is fantastic. It was right on the limit as we saw. And there you have it. Bilal Khan has got pole position here at the Australian Grand Prix and on the front row, just 20... Uh, sorry, yeah, a fifth of a tenth of something. 2100. That's the one. Uh, Ricky is in second, a new driver, of course. And then Jay Ghost is going to start P3. <laughs> Unlike the overcast conditions of qualifying, it is beautiful sunshine for the race. Quite a contrast from last week, it has to be said. Uh, as Bilal Khan is going to lead the field away. He got pole position, his first pole position of the year. And he's got Ricky alongside. A bit of an unknown in the Haas. He, of course, is competing in his first race. Jay Ghost is in P3. He's the championship leader. And his nearest challengers are Carnes and Hapuli Boy in the, in the championship, that is. They're P5 and P7. Johannes has got his best qualifying performance of the year in P4. Then Carnes. Then Mr. Psycho Sane is in P6. Hapuli Boy P7. And then the two Salvers are going to start alongside each other. That's P8, Caesar T-Pain. P9, DJ Marshall. And then Hoback rounds out the top 10. And then just outside the top 10, you've got Purple Petrol, Mayna, Curly Apex, Shiki, and then the three guys at the back who didn't set a lap time. You've got Gilzo, who could well make a charge through the field like he did last time out, Nelez, and Jack Hickey, last year's Australian Grand Prix winner. He wasn't able to set a lap time in qualifying. He start P17. Yeah, someone to look out for, I think, is Mr. Psycho saying he is in the top six on those super soft tyres. If he can pull off a one-stop and he can maintain that pace, he could be a dark horse for the wing here. 
Yeah, the question is whether those guys in the ultra soft tyres can do a one stop as well. I think it's doable. You're going to have to take the tyres until about lap nine. If they're coming in before that, it's probably a two stop. But if they make them last that long, they might be able to go on the same strategy as Mr. Psycho Sane and anyone outside of the top 10 on super soft tyres. We're now going for four races in a row with a glitch start. We'll have to wait and see. And we are away. And once again, the cars remain on the grid. And now they finally do go. Has anyone been caught out this time? It doesn't look as if Bilal Khan has, as Ricky Files in behind him. The McLaren's on the right-hand side. Hapuli Boy perhaps looking for, to make a move. It looks as if Mr. Psycho Sane on those tyres is battling away with Khan's. And Mr. Psycho Sane's actually lost out in that battle. The top four have remained completely unchanged. It's a rather clean start. Anyone trying to move into turn three? The McLaren of Hapuli Boy is up to P5. He's made a move work. And look at the two of them battling away. As Kant and Mr. Psycho saying again, Caesar Payne, ha Caesar T Payne hasn't been able to make much progress from P8. But as you can see, at the top four have remained in their positions and the battling is continuing down the field. Homeback has made his way into P8, but Caesar T Payne is having none of it. Sam, it's frantic. The further back you go. Yeah, absolutely fighting and Carnes has made a huge mistake. He's off on the grass. A big loser on that was DJ Marshall. He went from being in the top 10. He fell all the way down to 13th place. So he's recovered well. He's fighting next to home back once again. We saw these two fight before. They're side by side going into the fast chicane. Three wide. Oh, there's no incidents there. Oh, there's a car off. That is, that is a Sauber. I believe that is DJ Marshall. Yeah, he's off the track there. He's kept it clean and recovered well. These, this, this group here between 8th and 12th are all over the place. And Jack Hickey is managing to get on the back of it now. A great start for him as well from the back of the grid. Such a difference between the guys at the front and at the back. The guys at the front got away super cleanly. The guys at the back are separated by the smallest of margins. As we're now on board with DJ Marshall, he's battling away with Gilzo. Deja vu from last time out in Hungary. And as you say, Jack Hickey is just behind them. He's made up five places, but a disastrous start for Carnes. He's gone all the way down from P5 into P14. And another one in the pits. That's Curly Apex. He'll put on the soft tyres. He had an incident on the first lap last time out as well. He'll be hoping to catch a break at some point. Balau Card leading the way by six temps at the front. And then Jay Ghost is a further second back. The top four are going to be very happy with how their starts have gone. As are Hapuli Boy and Caesar T-Pain. They've made up two places each. Yeah, DJ Marshall just pulled off a brilliant overtake down the inside of Homeback. And Jack Hickey's all over the back of the both of them. Homeback is now... Sorry, Gilzo is now going around the outside. No, DJ Marshall got fed as well. Let's see who gets the better run around the long, sweeping left-hander. Oh, it's a great undercut from Gilzo. He's going up the inside already. Can Jack Hickey capitalise on this? Will there be damage? Let's see through this fast, fast corner. DJ Marshall tucks it well. That is mature racing from DJ Marshall. We see he likes to play it clean. It benefits him often. But Jack Hickey on the gearbox now. No DRS open, remember. And Jack Hickey's going to send it down the inside. No, he's tucked in. All of them being very sensible. A little bit disappointing. <laughs> Perhaps a little disappointing from a viewer's perspective. But we've seen how much damage can ruin a race in the last few. Jack Hickey does now send it up the inside of DJ Marshall. And DJ Mar, there's contact. There's contact between Marshall and Hickey. And it's Hickey that's lost out. He had to take to the grass ever so slightly. And now he will have to... Oh, Hapuli Boy is off. He's round. He's in the gravel. Oh, Hapuli Boy, after such a good start, is... Cl oh, no. That is disastrous. Hapuli Boy down in P12 now as Carnes is going to sweep around the outside of him. Hapuli Boy, his misery goes down to P13 and now he's going to have to start trying to work his way through the field. I think there was contact there. I believe that the gap closed right down to nothing. And, was, and Ricky's making a move for the lead. Ricky's in the lead. He's taken Bilal Khan. Ricky, the new guy, looking for a debut win and he's overtaken Bilal Khan for P1. What a move. Jay Ghost is tucked in behind in P3. S Hickey though. Another incident for him, and he's DNF'd inside three laps here. Whoa, where's Bilal Khan gone? He's had major issues there. The front wing's gone, he's in the gravel. The fast corner has caught him out there. There's Shiki in the wall as well, so this has gone disastrously for uh, uh, Mr. Bilal Khan. An absolute repetition of what happened last year, as Mr. Psycho saying, and D uh, Caesar T-Pain, oh. I should say, are battling away. Mr. Psycho saying making those tyres work. Bilal Khan is all the way down in P10. It might just be a case of those tyres are red hot and he might need to pit. Bilal Khan, after starting P1 as Khan's goes around the outside of him, is down in P12. Disastrous starts for him, for Khan's, for Hipuli Boy. 
This only benefits Jay Ghost. And Ricky, the new guy on the block, is doing a great job with a two and a half second gap at the front there. Sees a T peg into the pits. Is this a scheduled pit stop then? Uh, no, the front wing is being changed. We did see, actually, he wasn't far away from Johannes. There was about a three-tenth gap between them, so maybe the two of them have had contact at some point on lap three there. It's going to help the guys out front, though. We know he's quick, so Ricky has the lead. Jay goes in second, and Johannes is currently P3. What oh, oh, Gilzo's round! Purple Petrol has taken Gilzo out! Oh, no, an incident between Purple Petrol and Gilzo. And Gilzo's the latest person to fall down the order as a result of contact. Jack Hickey and DJ Marshall are still battling away. And I think there's front wing damage for DJ Marshall as Purple Petrol has now swept around him as well. DJ Marshall was the, was was in the fight there. Oh, there's a poor Cindy in backwards. Home back to the middle of the track. DJ Marshall fortunately goes straight through. Jay Ghost is out. Jay Ghost is out. Jay Ghost is now out of the race. The winner from a couple of times ago, our championship leader, is out. He hasn't been able to deal with the chicane very well. And Jay Ghost, catastrophe for him. There's absolute bedlam on the first four laps here. Mr. Mr. Cypher says he's only eight, eight tenths away from your hands, hands out at the, the front, front now. And Ricky, who's avoiding all this drama, is five, five, five seconds in front, although we've seen, we've seen even, even the best can, can put it in the wall, as, uh, as, uh, as old Jay Ghost just, just did. Oh, we've got another car in the wall. It's, 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 who is it? It's Jack Hickey. It's someone, Jack Hickey's out. He's, uh, he's lost his front wing big, big time there. there. Oh, no. Jack Hickey, after a great start, up into P4 within a matter of laps, and now he's conceded a few. A lot of drivers are finding this circuit very difficult to handle. No one is safe in Australia. This might be decided, the whole race might be decided by who can keep it clean. Who can make sure that they, they avoid any mistakes. The Pooley Boy Apuli is out. out of the race, which means McLaren... Oh, 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 so the Pooley Boy has gone out in exactly the same place as his teammate. But Lord Khan is back, he's in the track. Oh, home back goes straight through him. This is a disaster fest. So Jack Hickey has come into the pits uh, for a change of his front wing. As we say, the two McLarens are both out of this race inside the first six laps. The two guys who lead the championship, they probably won't after today. As we're on board now with Mr. Psycho saying he's in a very good position. His super soft tyres are going to last longer than Johannes' ultra soft tyres in front of him. Is he going to be able to make this work? Make a one-stop work and potentially win this race. So Mr. Psycho saying remains on the back of Johannes. He pulled alongside him under DRS as Ricky goes into the pits that's probably for tyres it, it, you'd guess that won't be an incident that he's had so we do know now that Ricky is not going to be one stopping this race he is two stopping and Mr Psycho saying builds and builds towards Johannes who now has the lead of the race DJ Marshall has got a three second time penalty so he's racking up the seconds at this moment Mr Psycho saying now going to try a dive bomb into turn three going for the lead of the race and Johannes has got no choice but to let him go Mr Psycho saying heads up the field just, just a little update while you guys are commentating on the front there uh, Carl's managed to get past Purple Petrol but not without putting him straight into the wall he's got no front wheel he's had to pit oh disastrous for Purple Petrol he was in such a good position after that crazy start Khan's of course had a crazy start himself he's now up to p3 so did gilzo he's up to p4 yeah home back oh, oh. Hit purple petrol coming up the pins purple petrol cannot catch a break with the car brothers and neither can Bilal khan to be honest you wouldn't be surprised if Bilal khan is gonna give it up in a moment as gilzo's got past Khan's for p3 something that we've missed Gilzo, the Force India driver, he finished P3 last time out. Is he going to be able to replicate that today? Johannes has, has decided to go on the soft tyres, so there is a chance he'll be able to make it to the end. Ricky on the super soft tyres has definitely gone away from that kind of a strategy. The battle for P2 now rages on as Gilzo is trying to defend against Carnes. Obviously, he picked up that position on the last lap, but Carnes is dogged. He wants that position back. Is he going to be able to claim it back? Johannes, only four tenths behind Caesar T Pag on fresh, soft tyres. Yeah, I think Caesar T Pag actually just mugged to Johannes as he uh, came out the pit lane. So Johannes on cold tyres, but yeah, he'll catch, he should be on the back of um, Caesar T Pag pretty soon. Johannes playing it safe, he runs a little wide on that corner, but he knows that Caesar T Pag has the pace. He knows that sticking behind him is a Oh, Curly Apex has retired. Yep, Curly Apex becomes the fifth casualty of this race, and we're left now with just 12 runners. So anyone who can keep it clean is probably going to be rewarded with points. Bilal Khan isn't in the points at the moment after 
Qualifying on pole, he's down in P11. He's had so many incidents, Carnes has actually come into the pits and he has put on the soft tyre, so expect him to go to the end. So Johannes, even with the time penalty, is in a fairly good position right now. He's P6, having pit. He's going to be one stopping this race. So is Ricky in P3. And Gilzo! Gilzo is out of the session. Gilzo was running P2, but the Force India is out of here. And I think it's in a place that has become all too familiar for these drivers. On the exit of that very difficult chicane, has probably lost it going through. And Caesar T-Pain up the inside of Mayna. Yes, Caesar T-Pain makes P3 stick. What is going to be interesting, I think the battle for the race win is going to be between Mr. Psycho Sane and Ricky. Although saying that, we've fought one thing and then something else has happened, so you never know. Mr. Psycho Sane has got to come into the pits yet. He is on a one-stop. Ricky is going to be two-stopping. It could be fascinating. It really could be. If you just look at the, the top five in the championship coming into this race, the first place guy, Jay Ghost, retired. Hippuli Boy retired. Khan's running in P6. Bilal Khan is running in P10. Gilzo retired. That's the top five heading into this race. And they have all, they're have they all either out of the race or are struggling. Let's recap <laughs> the race. After 11, ra uh, after 11 <laughs> raps. <laughs> yo, 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 rap 11. Do that again. After 12 I'm laps of the Grand Prix, Mr. Psycho Sane leads the way. He's still got to pit. He's managed to make those super soft tyres work. Uh, but yes, he will have to do one more stop. As will Ricky in P2. He's two stopping the race. He's shown a lot of pace on his debut. And then Caesar T-Pain is third. Johannes is P4. DJ Marshall is P5. So the Salva guys are going well. As are the Haas guys, P2 and P6. Carnes is currently P6. Homeback is P7, but has Jack Hickey within a second of him behind. Maida is in P9, Bilal Khan in P10, and then Purple Petrol is the last runner at the moment. He was as high as P4 at one point, but uh, front wing damage caused him to pit, and then he was hit going out of the pits again. So 11 runners, 5 are out, 1 didn't start, and absolute 12 laps of chaos. Carnes is within three tenths of DJ Marshall and he's looking up the inside for a pass here. Can DJ Marshall defend or is he going to let Carnes through easily? DJ Marshall rather cleverly goes to the middle of the track going into that corner to avoid any move. He's going to have to make sure that that doesn't compensate his run coming out of this corner because you can make a move into the chicane like we saw Carnes do on Mayna last year. Nothing doing there. But Carnes will be looking to build again as he goes on the DRS. Is he going to be able to make a move down the inside? DJ Marshall goes towards the middle of the circuit again. Oh, contact. contact! DJ Marshall and Carnes come to blows here on lap 13. DJ Marshall's got through Scott free. However, Carnes has spun around five seconds down on DJ Marshall. Mr. Psycho saying is coming to the pits. He's re-emerged P3 behind Caesar T-Pain. Mr. Psycho is saying is within DRS range now of Caesar T Pain, and we know that Caesar T Pain has that penalty. Jack Hick is also now in DRS range, but can they make it count? We know in this day and age of Formula One, it can be difficult to follow. Yeah, Caesar T Pain is now on 11 lap old soft tyres, whereas Mr. Psycho Zane's are only just two laps old, so he should theoretically be able to get past him he's close yeah the gap's been narrowed to just three tenths but it's not quite slim enough for him to make a move down into turn three he'll probably have to follow him through for the rest of sector one but another opportunity might happen later in the lap mr psycho saying looking to make a move on caesar t-pain into that position where khan spun around and khan will be like playing it a little safer yeah khan is going to be making no, no, his way contact, contact. DJ Marshall has been nudged off the track and Khan slides through. Yeah, Khan surely wasn't oh. very... Able. Look at the two fighting away. There was double contact between T-Pain and Mr. Psycho Sane there. And they're still side by side as they go down into turn one. That was crazy as we went on board with them. Mr. Psycho Sane does have the position, but we went on board with Mr. Psycho Sane and two times within about half a second, they came to blows. Jack Hickey looking to make a move on home back. Oh, nice. Sweeped around that the outside. Was... Lush. Love to see that kind of move and home back did well to uh, to get out of his way and make sure that there wasn't contact in that corner. Home back must have lost a lot of time because there was an over one second gap between the two of them at one point. Maybe those super soft tyres uh, that have gone 11 laps are starting to wear out for him. Bilal Khan is into the pits uh, and he will obviously only drop one place because that's the only place he can drop at the moment. Oh, oh and that's home back's oh. round. Yeah, home back is facing the wrong way. Not something you ever want to see as home back has lost another position to Mayna. 
Maybe it's those tyres. 11 lap old super softs don't fare well around Melbourne. DJ Marshall is into the pits there. He's gone straight on there. That's a very weird one. Is he... He's just locked up. We saw this with Bilal Khan earlier. He got a bit of damage and just couldn't, couldn't steer the car. Well, perhaps before we were wondering whether DJ Marshall and Homeback would come out anywhere near each other after the Sauber driver pitted, but it looks as if he's going to go out quite a bit ahead of him now. Now, what is interesting is that Psycho Saying has managed to bring the gap to Ricky down to 10 seconds. This is going to give him a big advantage, but on very old tyres by the end of this race. Yeah, 10 second advantage, but obviously uh, they both need to pit once more. Ricky's going to be on the faster strategy. It could be very, very interesting. As you say, last few laps could be worth watching. He's in this lap, Ben. He's in this lap. He's pulling in now. Yep, so Ricky is making his second stop. The super soft tyres have served him well on that synth. I reckon he'll go for the same again. So, Mr. Psycho saying is coming down the start finish straight. He will comfortably pass him. And it is the super soft tyres once again for the hash driver. Where will he re-emerge? I think it will be P4 quite comfortably ahead of Carnes. Uh, and he'll go about chasing Johannes. There's only three seconds. Oh, sorry, no, there's going to be more than three seconds between them. Uh, it's about seven and a half seconds between Ricky and Johannes. He should be able to eat into that gap fairly quickly, though, on those fresh super softs. Psycho Saints picked up a time penalty. Uh, so that could very well play a massive crucial part at the end of this race because Ricky as far as we know hasn't got one yeah the gap to Mr. Psycho saying Ricky is only about 12 to 13 seconds so currently the uh, the cards are all in Ricky's deck which is an expression I've just made up Over purple petrol occupying p10 home back after having to come into the pits is he going to be able to have a go into turn one? He thinks better of it, and he's going to try and launch an attack going down into turn three. He gets on the DRS. He's got a much better exit. Purple Petrol nearly doesn't give him the space, but he does eventually, and sweeping around the outside, possibly. Has he got the traction to make that work? He's now got the inside line. It's turn four. Purple Petrol defends it well. That was quality driving there from Purple Petrol. It's one of the best defending I've seen him. He has come on leaps and bounds since the first race back in Season 1 of the Late Breaking Online Racing League. We saw he wasn't quite able to get it done on the last lap, but this time, just two temps behind Purple Petrol. He isn't using any ERS, which is perhaps why he isn't building too much. Up the inside, though. Yes! The Force India through to P10. Now, the gap between... Yeah, Ricky and uh, Mr. Psycho saying there, he is bringing the gap down. They've got yellow flags in sector three. Oh, DJ Marshall's round. Oh, DJ Marshall. That's disastrous. He was looking like he was going to put in a really good performance, but he's just conceded P8 to Jack Hickey. The three second, yeah, three second time penalties are starting to flood in now. Most do have three seconds there's only a few that don't purple petrol is ignoring the blue oh, flag no. and as a result gets five <laughs> seconds uh it might be funny for us but i don't think it's gonna be very funny for ricky who desperately wants to get past him caesar t-pain still hasn't coming into to the pits actually which is interesting he's gone 17 laps on those soft tires that is bold i don't know if he's going to be able to make it to the end they are going to be 70 percent 80 percent wear puncture time on board with Ricky. The Haas guys are doing very well, actually. They're the P4 in the championship, but they will be able to get ahead of Force India with some uh, with some good performances here. Ricky's belted in another fastest lap of the race. He's as he, flying, isn't he? He is flying, and he's going to come up to Johannes very quickly. It's going to be about how quickly he can get past him and then possibly Caesar T-Pain as well. Yeah, I think it's almost certain that Ricky will beat Johannes at this point and probably Caesar T-Pain as well. Uh, it's about whether he catches Mr. Psycho Sane by enough. We know Mr. Psycho Sane has that three second time penalty, which puts the gap down to maybe about six seconds now, but he still needs to eat into that with eight laps to go. Sector throw, oh, yellow flags. Oh, that's, that's, that's Bilal Khan. He's round on the start finish straight. This race is an absolute disaster. Starting pole, down in ninth. Oh, mate, oh, he's just been lapped again, I think, by Mr. Psycho Sane. He, he is struggling here. 
What's Psycho saying letting through for though? He's had an illegal overtake, I think. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Psycho said that. That is not going to help his uh, his gap to Ricky. Not at all, as Ricky's only six tenths Main of a second. Well. Main is retired. And Ricky's got a great one with your hangers. Get on board with, the, with Ricky. He's going up the inside. Oh, he always oh, fakes outside and pulls back in. He thinks better of it. Oh, Ricky. Oh, right around the outside. That is fantastic car control. He's been forced to go as far wide as you can reasonably go there. And he's kept control of the car, gone right around the outside. And Ricky very nearly has an incident. And Johannes might fancy having a go back into the chicane. Johannes isn't going to want to give this up straight away. Is he going to be able to form an outside line? Not quite. And now Ricky, you would say, has the move done. Johannes nearly loses the car on exit. That was very scary for him. Well, I was going to say Ricky will want to be the fourth different winner this year. But even if Mr. Psycho same wins, it will be the fourth different winner this year. It's a question of whether Ricky can become the latest guy to win on debut. 1.2 seconds separating him and Caesar T. Payne. It could all come down to how quickly he gets past the Sauber. Yeah, 6.5 seconds separating them. Take away the penalty, that's 3.5 seconds with four laps to go. It's doable. It's definitely doable but incredibly tough and it looks as though Ricky tyres are starting to slide off of that peak performance. He's just catching... Oh! No, he's oh, in the That could be it! That could be race deciding! Ricky has hit the wall on the exit of the chicane and now he might not have the performance left in order Bilal to... Khan's oh, yes. Bilal Khan has DNF'd! Bilal Khan has DNF'd! He's in the same wall that all the others have crashed in. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Annoyingly for Bilal Khan, the 90% rule means that he was one lap away from actually securing a point. So <laughs> oh, no. Bilal Khan won't get any points, I'm afraid. Uh, and Caesar T-Pain in P2 has done a tremendous job on those soft tyres. I don't know whether he'll be able to hold off Ricky for the last three laps, but he's going to give it everything that he's got. The Haas is going to pull to the outside and look to make a move. Has he got... Oh, I thought he might be able to cut back but not quite. Caesar T-Pain holds on to the position for just a little bit longer. He's given it everything he's got. ERS to the max. He hasn't got much left in reserve. And Caesar T-Pain will be glad to know that. DRS activated once more. This could be it. This could be the corner where P2 is decided. No, Caesar T-Pain breaks late enough into the corner to prevent Ricky from overtaking him once more. I think this really is the deciding factor for Ricky in that race wing. And unfortunately, I think that slight front wing damage and the lack of tyre grip that he now has is really hurting his pace. I honestly think it can all be in the back of Mr. Psycho saying as he is on his penultimate lap at the lead. Here he goes. Ricky! Side by side! No, Caesar T-Pain keeps it once more. He is defending as if his life depends on it. Can he defend into turn three? And he's gone too close to the back of him. There's contact between the drivers and Ricky's front wing is going to be destroyed. Now Jack Hickey's picked up another penalty and DJ Marshall is only three and a half seconds behind. That could swap those two over at the end of the race. Quite possibly. Mr. Psycho saying is going to be looking at the gap back to Caesar T-Pain now and be delighted that Ricky is not being able to overtake him. It's pretty much put this win out of reach because the gap has increased rather than decreased. Ricky, though, will still want that P2. It's worth three valuable championship points if he can get the place on Caesar T-Pain and his 24-lap old soft tyres. He's had contact with the grass on exit, which could cause him to lose momentum. Is it enough for Ricky? into the corner here still side by side the two of them are not giving it up the Haas is through penultimate lap Ricky takes P2 what a move what a move as we watch Mr. Psycho say start his final lap of the Australian Grand Prix he's made the one stop work perfectly delivering a great performance on Saturday on the Harlow compound tyre and with a 10 second gap it looks all but inevitable that he will take victory here in Australia it might not be a battle for the lead that we thought might happen about 10 laps ago, but we've got two equally entertaining battles out on circuit. The Haas is clearly gaining on the Renault of Johannes. Is he going to be able to get a better exit? Oh, look at that for a move! Cons! 
Well, while the battles are going on further down the track and what brilliant moves they are, Miska Psycho Sang has navigated the track for the final time, making it through the, the corner that so many cars have pressed. Oh, he has a big slide out the penultimate corner, but keeps it, likes to end with a bit of flair. He uh, cruises down the start finish straight and across the line to wing the Australian Grand Prix. Mr. Psycho Sane wraps up the win. He is the fourth different winner this year. Ricky is going to come home in P2. It wasn't quite the win that he was hoping for, but he did at least get Caesar T. Payne at the end. And it's going to be left to Carnes to pick up P4. Uh, but Johannes has actually got less penalties than him. So Johannes is going to finish P4 ahead of Carnes. The overtake didn't end up mattering. Home back and Purple Petrol were both lapped in P8 and P9. So they're done. So we're just waiting for Jack Kiki in P6. And unless he makes a big error, uh, or if he has more penalties than DJ Marshall, I don't think he has. Uh, I, I, think think he he does. Does. I, I think he does. I think he has one more three-second time penalty, penalty, but we shall be shown in less than, less than 30, 30 seconds, seconds time. time. As Jack Hickey comes up to, comes the, comes up to the penultimate, penultimate corner, corner, a difficult, a difficult race, race for Hickey. Hickey. He's starting 17th, and he's going and he's to going finish 6th. So realistically, so realistically you can call that a great, great comeback. He was as high as P4 after a few laps, and then got into some trouble, which caused him to fall the way back through the grid. DJ Marshall is going to cross the line, and I, I think that was behind Jack Kiki. We'll see confirmation of that at the moment. in a moment. Let's get us to the podium. And there you have the podium for this race. A Merck, a Haas, and a Sauber. Caesar t -Pain follows up his win last time out with a P3. He'll be happy with that. But that's the guy they're all looking at. The Mercedes and Mr. Psycho saying... Just 13 points heading into this race. He was P11 in the championship. He's going to be a lot higher than that now. Yeah, I mean, a fantastic performance, Mr. Psycho Sane. But let's look at the debut of Ricky. What a drive. He made a difficult strategy work and pulled some flawless overtakes to get him into the position that he's finished giving. He thoroughly deserved it. A great race. The, one of the only ones to not have penalties. And there you have it. Confirmation that Mr. Psycho Sane has won this race ahead of Ricky and Caesar T-Pain. That's your podium for the race. Ricky not quite making the two-stop work to give him the win. Johannes will finish the same position he started in, P4, his best result of the year so far. Carnes finishes P5, but thanks to others around him struggling, he will have the championship lead as we go into round five. Jack Hickey is P6, DJ Marshall P7, Homeback P8, Purple Petrol will pick up his first two points of the season in P9, Bilal Khan P10, he was uh, on pole position, but DNF'd a few laps from the end after a tough race. Mainer P11, Gilzo P12, all of these guys retired. P13, Curly Apex, Apuli Boy and Jay Ghost, the two McLaren guys who have been so dominant so far, both out of the race, the same as S Hickey in P16. And that's going to do it from a very entertaining Australian Grand Prix. Join us next time for the Bahrain Grand Prix Round 5 heading your way. Until then, I've been Ben Hocking. I've been Harry Eve. And I've been Samuel Sage. And remember, keep breaking late.